Blockbuster Video. More movies, more nights, more fun. Blockbuster Video. Wow, what a difference. Before Blockbuster would have everyone saying, let's make it a Blockbuster night. So instead of going out, Guys? make it a Blockbuster night. Before Blockbuster would attempt to start up their own amusement park and produce the Blockbuster Entertainment Awards from 1995 to 2001. We're here tonight to honor your favorite stars in movies and music because these awards are voted on by you, the people who don't see the movie in the movie theater. Before Blockbuster would become a global empire with locations in Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, Brazil, Canada, Denmark, Mexico, Germany, Japan, Norway, Peru, and of course the UK. Can you even imagine a world where you would actually get in your car, drive to a store, spend 30 minutes walking down the aisles, and then go home to watch the latest Hollywood release? And from there, well, they charge you an extra fee if you forgot to rewind the tape, or if you were late in bringing back the film. I can't even imagine. Those were simpler times. Now I once rented Hot Shots 2 starring Charlie Sheen, and we racked up hundreds of dollars in late fees. And uh, well, that's when we just started going to Jumbo Video instead. There they gave us free popcorn. Now much like the title of the film, The Perfect Storm, well, so many factors came together at once to put a demise to Blockbuster Entertainment. Valued at $4.6 billion in 1997, the company only has one remaining store at the time of this recording. Them late fees, well, it turns out they were Blockbuster's Achilles heel. Also the uprise of Netflix, which was a company that wanted to be bought out by Blockbuster back in 2000. For not a lot of money, considering what it's worth now. And wait till you hear what the last ever rented film was. It's gonna blow your mind. What's going on guys, it's your boy Michael Crutton documenting the life and career of Blockbuster. Here for you all before they are gone. Now we've done a few other corporations in the past, including the recent demise of Toys R Us, and you guys seem to have really enjoyed that video. Now if you want more corporate bios, well we have a playlist down below. Also, uh, let us know who's next. Burger Chef? I don't know. Sound off down below. The first Blockbuster store opened on October 19th, 1985 in Dallas, Texas, making Blockbuster a Libra. Now the movie rental juggernaut actually started out as the lame sounding corporation known as Cook Data Services, which was founded by David Cook in 1978. Operating out of Texas, the company's job was to supply oil and gas industries with software services, but business was slow due to failing oil prices. Now his wife Sandy, she had an interest in the then thriving video rental business and seeing it as a feasible plan, well, David started doing his research. Now, the VHS rental market was exploding, growing from 7,000 stores in 1983 to 19,000 in 1986. He bought up an existing franchise known as Video Works located in Dallas, but they didn't like his color scheme of yellow and blue. And that was enough for David to strike out on his own. He opened up his first ever store in 1985 and his experience in software services, well they gave him an edge on the competition because he knew how to keep track of all his video rentals, you know, building up a large database. Before the days of DVD or the cloud, Blockbuster featured thousands of video tapes on the shelves. Video tapes. Now from the get go, David's business, Blockbuster Entertainment, it was booming. The following year, he bought three more locations. Now his stores were three times bigger than any of his nearby competitors, and he had made some revolutionary decisions from day one. He made searching for a film an experience in itself, allowing customers to walk through the store rather than have them, you know, behind a shelf. He also kept his store open later than his competitors, and he opted to stay out of the porn game. I mean, who wants to rent a porn anyway? Like someone would have to return that. Ugh. After three years of hard work, Will David sold the business for $18.5 million. With inflation, that would be around $36 million today. By 1988, Will Blockbuster was America's leading video chain with some 400 locations. By 1992, Blockbuster had well over 1,000 stores and it expanded overseas with another 2,800 locations worldwide. In 1994, multimedia giant Viacom, they're the guys who own MTV and Nickelodeon, well, they bought up Blockbuster for $8.4 billion. And with this came close ties to studios like Warner Bros, Paramount, Disney, and the rest. Now deals were struck where Blockbuster, they would hand over 40% of their earnings back to the studios and the analytics that came with the rentals. 
and this was in exchange for them to get them beautiful early releases. Now another big success for the company was a core battle against Nintendo, which birthed the beginning of the video game rental boom. They've got more video games for rent than anyone in the world, and now every blockbuster is getting tons of the coolest new video games, and you can play for three whole evenings. A little off topic, but 1994 was and will forever be the best year in the history of film. All my faves, they're from 1994. Attack of Forrest Gump, Interview with the Vampire, The Lion King, Shawshank Redemption, Pulp Fiction. Then there were the three Jim Carrey classics, Dumb and Dumber, The Mask, and Ace Ventura Pet Detective. It's also the year I made my big film debut in the Santa Claus. That, that's a whole different story. The fine folks at Blockbuster, they were rolling in dough. In 2000, the company had earned $800 million in late fees alone. Yeah, that was 60% of their total revenue. Now the company had literally changed the movie business forever and further strengthened the world of Blockbuster films. You know, the era we're living in today. Now Nathan Adams of Film School Rejects, he summed up its impact nicely in the following words. Blockbuster was once an unstoppable giant whose franchises swept across the country, putting mom and pop video stores out of business left and right. By offering a larger selection of new releases, pricing them at a lower point due to the volume they worked in. Gone were the fragmented, independently owned shops that were often unorganized treasure troves of VHS discoveries. In their place were walls of new releases, hundreds of copies of a small handful of films. Everyone watching the same thing, everyone developing the same limited set of expectations. They put focus entirely on what was new rather than on discovering film history. Whew, yeah, that was deep. Now with a new movie hitting the shelves at Blockbuster, people were flocking to their stores. Even Stifler's mom's little buddy, he was there. Straight. That's straight. But not everyone was McLovin Blockbuster's video rental monopoly. A man by the name of Reed Hastings, he was frustrated after receiving a $40 late charge when he held on to his copy of Apollo 13 a little too long. Now this gave him and his partner, Mark Randolph, the idea to start up Netflix back in 1997. Now initially, they were a computer mail order company that sent you DVDs of your favorite films. Three years later, these men, they were at Blockbuster headquarters and they offered up Netflix for $50 million. Apparently, they were laughed out of the room. Now, as we all know, Netflix was onto something and DVDs, they were changing the game. Now, the big Hollywood studios, they wanted the same deal of a 40-60 split like they had with VHSs, but for DVDs. And Blockbuster, well, they were feeling so cocky, they turned that offer down. Now, the studios, they didn't like that. And they responded by lowering their DVD wholesale price in order to compete with the rental industry. Now, Blockbuster was late to the game on DVDs, and this was one of many missteps they were about to make. New competitors like Walmart began selling DVDs below wholesale price in hopes of selling more items with better profit margins as a result of the additional foot traffic in their stores. Now, I remember when DVDs were the shit. I mean, people would actually go out and steal them. In fact, I found a clip. Hey, Stanley. Mind if I get this out? Can I get this out? Yeah. In 2004, Blockbuster was at the peak of its power with over 9,000 locations the world over. They even had their own award show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome last year's Blockbuster winner for a favorite actress in an action adventure and the star of Bullworth, Halle Berry. Despite all the glitz and glamour, competition was closing in. Netflix had gone public in 2002 and in an effort to win back consumers, well, Blockbuster decided to abolish late fees, but it wouldn't last. No more late fees, no more late fees. New customers weren't happy for long because they soon found out that although they weren't paying a late fee, they were now being forced to pay a restocking fee. Also, the full price of the film if it went after 30 days. Now, learning from their mistake on missing out on the DVD revolution, will Blockbuster double down on Blu-rays? Bought up all of them. And, uh, eh, people like them, but it was still too little too late. Now, the no late fees policy, it didn't last long. They brought it back. Then in 2010, Blockbuster filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, looking for $1 billion in debt relief. Video rental chain Blockbuster has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Chapter 11 allows the company to reorganize its debt, so Blockbuster isn't going away anytime soon. 
By 2013, stores were closing all over the world, and what remained of the company? Well, they made efforts to catch up with the internet. There was Blockbuster Rewards, Blockbuster Online, and in 2011, they set up Blockbuster Movie Pass. This was to compete directly with Netflix. Now, people would pay $10 per month and have access to both streaming services and movies and games by mail, but the package was only available for subscribers of Dish Network's pay TV service. And its endeavor, well, it folded the following year. Now, at the time of this recording, only one store remains open in good old Bend, Oregon. Yes, there were two more stores open in Alaska, but the Anchorage Daily News reports that's going to change on Monday when both of those locations close. No! Now, this is an independently owned location. They're just borrowing the blue and yellow and the Blockbuster name. The last official Blockbuster video store to release a rental? Well, the movie was This Is The End. You know, the Seth Rogen film? How fitting. As for the rest of the story, well, we're gonna wrap this one up here because this is before they were gone. My name is Michael McCrudden. We make all sorts of celebrity bios here for you on this channel. We do a few corporations now and then when uh, when you guys uh, request it. And this one was requested a bunch. Let us know who's next in the comments down below. I'll be sure to see you guys in another video. And I think that's it. Okay, bye. Oh! Also, let me know what movie you rented at Blockbuster or any memories. Look, good old memory lane. I saw the Blockbuster video store and it was closing down and now it's a paint store.